Hey y'all, today I'm in the kitchen and I am gonna be working on the kitchen backsplash. All right, so for the backsplash, I'm gonna be using this stone ledger. I got it at Lowe's, I'll put a link down below. I am gonna be putting it on drywall. Um, the manufacturer of this stone says that you can put it on drywall for up to 10 feet. Ideally, you'll wanna apply this towel over unpainted drywall, but this drywall is painted, so I'm just working with what I have and I'm taking some coarse sandpaper and sanding it just to rough up the surface a little bit. So I went ahead and put down some wax paper on the countertops. This is just to protect them because I usually make a mess anytime I'm using thin set. So I have everything covered up. I have four boxes of my towel down here that I'm gonna be working out of. I'm gonna be alternating, like taking one from here, one from here, one from here. That way I have a good mix of pattern and color. So now I'm ready to go ahead and mix my thin set. All right, this is a thin set I'm gonna be using. I got this stuff at Lowe's. It is large format floor and wall tile. It is a modified thin set and it is non-slip for walls so it shouldn't do any sagging also for what it can be used over wallboard is listed and that's why i'm going to be putting it over today and for the type of tile pretty much every type of tile and natural stone so let's go ahead and mix it up so i only have one corner that i'm dealing with and it is an inside corner right here I am not going to be 45 in this. When I'm picking the pieces to use in the corner, I'm trying to pick the ones that are the flattest. So you can see all these are pretty much about the same level. So this is going to be a piece I'm going to use in the corner. And if you look at this one, so you see this one's sticking up, this one's way down, this one's sticking way up, way down. I'm not going to use this one in the corner. So I'm going to cut this straight and put it in the corner. I start off by applying thin set. I'm using a half inch by half inch square notch trowel. The first thing I do is I burn the thin set into the drywall using the flat side of the trowel. Then I flip it over and I use the notch side to trowel on more thin set. I use the corner of the trowel to go back and clean up any excess thin set that's at the bottom. The back surface of these tiles is very uneven, so I did back butter them with thin set. I also used some 8th inch wedges under the first row just to create a small gap for caulk. To do the cutouts for the outlets, I used my tile saw. I did the side cuts first and then I flipped the tile over and I did the bottom cut from the back of the tile. And if these cuts don't turn out perfect, it's okay because you're going to have the outlet cover that's going to cover around it. Once I lay a few tiles, I like to go back and clean up any thin set that came through the cracks because once it dries, it is very difficult to remove. I'm starting the second row and I cut this starting piece a good bit shorter than the starting piece of the first row that's under it. I did that just so that there wouldn't be any weird repeating patterns that would catch your eye.
After the tile had a chance to set up for 24 hours, I went back and I put a sealer on it. This sealer is gonna help protect it from stains and make it easier to clean. And this is really important in a kitchen. I put some of the sealer in a spray bottle and I'm just spraying it on and then using a rag to work it in. I put a bead of caulk where the tile meets the countertop and then I use some denatured alcohol to smooth it out. I have to do a little bit of work on the outlets before I can put the outlet covers on, so I'm going to shut off the power. Since this tile is a good bit thicker than most tile, you might have to use some spacers to pull your electrical outlets out a little bit more so that the covers fit properly. So I use these folding spacers. You just use as many as you need to get the proper spacing. I used four of them and that gave me a half an inch of spacing. And that brought the outlet out to where it was flush with the tile and the covers fit good. I ended up with about four or five cracks that were just a little bit bigger than what I wanted. So I mixed up some sanded grout and I used that to fill these gaps. I put the grout into a Ziploc bag and then I cut one of the corners off and I used it like a piping bag. Here is how it turned out after everything is finished. And then these grout places turned out pretty good right there. It was a big crack. <laughs> 